These are some of the health workers from the Midlands who've died from COVID-19. A disproportionate number are black or Asian. I've seen a few patients, um, one uh, collapsed in the waiting room, so I had to leave. Dr. Samara Afsal, a GP from Birmingham, says it's a worrying time for those from minority backgrounds in the NHS. I follow, you know, the nursing uh, college on Twitter and again they would pretty much every day be naming um, one of the nursing members who died. We'd obviously hear about all the doctors that had died as well. So it really used to um, trigger anxiety and each time coming into work, um, you know, we just hope that we don't come into contact with anybody with COVID. What we're seeing actually is a social issue. Professor Kahinda Andrews from Birmingham City University says the impact on people of colour in the NHS isn't surprising because of the large number who work on frontline services. That's what the NHS looks like. It looks like it's a, it's a place that employs many black and brown people from many parts of the world, but there's huge inequalities. So the top of the NHS is what they call snowy white peaks. Very, 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 very not much diversity. The front line of the NHS, however, very, very, very diverse. So when you have an illness like COVID, which is going to disproportionately affect frontline staff, again, this should not be a surprise. It was always going to tear through uh, that portion of the workforce. In April, Marcia Lawrence Russell took her father, Alan, who has diabetes, out of hospital after hearing he was going to be transferred to a COVID ward, even though he didn't have coronavirus. I believe that the reason why he was put on a COVID ward is because we are not simply getting the same a level of care. He, my father presented as a black man. They just didn't uh, value his life and made a rash decision that could have cost him his life. In response, the trust in question said, allegations that the clinical decisions were racially motivated are completely unfounded. Our staff had Mr Lawrence's best interests at heart. There are a number of symptoms that can indicate COVID-19 and patients are moved to suitable wards where they can receive the most appropriate care. Here in the Midlands, people are keen to find out more about the risk factors linked to COVID-19. Mainly just to do with like where they live, what they do as professions as well. It's very easy again for people, especially in the biological sciences, to just jump onto genetics and um, race science basically and scientific racism and blame black people and people of colour for our own deaths. Um, that is not good enough. When my grandma went to hospital, the last thing I thought was that I'll never see her again. And especially in the Asian community in Coventry, we, we had we were just about got a burial and Every day we go to the graveyard, there's just more and more graves are filling up. Meanwhile, Marcia is carrying out a survey of patients' experiences within the NHS, which she hopes will help to improve the quality of care they receive. And she believes it's high time inequalities in all areas were addressed. Even if it's unconscious bias, it's still bias. And for those who, who experience it, it's uh, losing a job that they really need in order to feed their family. It's not, it's not getting the career progression. And under this pandemic, it's losing a life. So it's really getting beyond inquiries and reviews and putting in real sanctions for those that discriminate. But there are countless patients like Kuli Sidki who say they've received first-class care from the NHS. Kuli from Leicester spent four weeks in intensive care with COVID-19. His family were told to expect the worst. It was a very positive experience right from the point of the paramedics coming and checking me over and getting me into the hospital. Without the, the NHS and the staff uh, and you know the care that the nurses provided and you know the, the speciality of the doctors, if it, if it wasn't for that I think I might not be here today. Rajiv Poppett, ITV News.